I love Trader Joe's. I love their two buck chuck, their dark chocolate almonds, and of course, all their awesome freezer meals. It's also cheap. I mean, where else can you get food that feels more natural and healthy at such rock bottom prices? And I'm not alone. Over the past few decades, Trader Joe's has experienced prolific growth. In 1997, the chain had about 96 stores. Today, they have over 500. A lot of that success has been built, at least in part, on Trader Joe's private label, the quality and unique options that come under that Trader Joe's brand. Imagine my surprise then, when I started to see articles linking some of Trader Joe's products to huge food companies like PepsiCo that supply any other standard grocery store. That got me thinking, who really supplies Trader Joe's label and why is Trader Joe's so secretive about it? I started this story a lot like many others. I went to Trader Joe's website, put in a request for an interview, and thought, why not get the information directly from the source, right? Well, I never got a response, and it turns out I'm not the only one who's had trouble getting info from Trader Joe's. It's pretty standard in the industry that people don't disclose who makes their private label, but Trader Joe's takes it to the next level. Beth Coet is a senior editor at Fortune Magazine who has written in depth about Trader Joe's. It was this company that people were obsessed with, um, but really didn't know that much about. They're very secretive. They are masters of the non-disclosure agreement. Their NDAs are fierce and seamless. Then there's Mark Gardiner. As an advertising executive, he was so intrigued by Trader Joe's business that he took a $12 an hour job at his local store out of curiosity and then decided to write a book on it in 2012. I started doing a little bit of research and the first thing that I learned is that there is no information about Trader Joe's, the company. They're just like, they just don't talk. Because of their tight-lipped practices, to figure out who supplies the Trader Joe's label, you need workarounds. Mark caught wind of one of these workarounds early on. So basically the only way these secrets get leaked are if there's a food recall or if there's lawsuits. Often Trader Joe's goods will have the identical ingredients to so the, the national brand equivalent, and that's one way we can sort of surmise who makes their goods. Both have limitations. The recall and lawsuit method only shows companies that have supplied Trader Joe's in the past. Those suppliers could have changed since. And the ingredient comparison can be tricky because experts say the company often asks for slight modifications on products from suppliers or might list some of the ingredients differently. Despite these hurdles, Beth was able to report that Stacy's Pita Chips, made by Frito-Lay, a division of the now $182 billion company PepsiCo, had made Trader Joe's popular pita chips with sea salt. She also reported that Stonyfield Farm, then part of dairy giant Dannon, supplied much of Trader Joe's East Coast stores. But it was the food site Eater who really put these methods to work and compiled one of the most comprehensive articles on likely big name Trader Joe's suppliers. Vince Dixon wrote the article. One of our reporters or editors came up with the idea of using freedom of information requests to look and see how many of the Trader Joe's products have been recalled at some point. So we submitted FOIA requests to the FDA and the USDA they asked for 10 years worth of recalls and eventually got back pages of information on dozens of companies. We already know about the Stacy's pita chips, but it turns out that other PepsiCo brands supplied Trader Joe's too. When you buy a smoothie from Trader Joe's, it's the same smoothie that PepsiCo makes under the Naked brand. Vince's article also found that Tribe Hummus had supplied Trader Joe's too. At the time, Tribe Hummus was owned through the Israeli-based Osim Group by Nestle. So you can start to see the threads connecting some of these familiar Trader Joe's products to some of the most formidable corporate food players in the world. And it doesn't stop there. It turns out that their pistachios, at least at some point, were made by the Wonderful Pistachio Company. I thought Wonderful was sort of a small organic brand, but it's a roughly $5 billion company with brand offerings including Fiji water and palm juice. Eater also used government databases and publicly available online ingredient information to do a rigorous set of comparisons on suspected Trader Joe's versions of popular big name products. They found striking similarities between, for example, Tate's Bake Shop cookies and Trader Joe's crispy chocolate chip cookies, noting almost identical taste and packaging as well. Tate's Bake Shop started as an independent company. But in 2018, after almost two decades of prolific growth, it was acquired for $500 million by snack food titan Mondelez International, 
which was spun off from Kraft Foods in 2012 and includes huge household brands like Oreo, Ritz, Philadelphia Cream Cheese, and Triscuits. Eater also found similarities between two varieties of Trader Joe's Pretzel Slims and the more commonly known Snack Factory Pretzel Crisps. Snack Factory was part of Snyder's Lance, Think Kettle Chips, which by this point, you will be unsurprised to learn, was acquired in 2018 by Campbell's Soup Company, and many of its brands were migrated under Campbell's umbrella to live alongside other big names like Goldfish, Milano, and SpaghettiOs. Of course, Trader Joe's label isn't all just massive suppliers. Much of Trader Joe's success comes from staying a step ahead of Americans' increasingly adventurous eating habits. Um, you know, they're not necessarily following trends, they're really setting them. That, in part, means branching out from the standard offerings you would find in other grocery stores and sending representatives out to find smaller suppliers who can provide trendy products for Trader Joe's stores. Suppliers have included companies that run the gambit from large organic applesauce makers like Manzana Products to good-for-you startups like Wildway, making grain-free granola, and according to Mark, even some small family-run shops. When I worked there, one of the things they sold was a, a frozen pizza that was actually made in Italy, frozen in Italy, and shipped to the United States. One of the things that they mentioned about that product was this is a little family business in Italy, and we buy everything they make. So why all the secrecy surrounding Trader Joe's suppliers? I mean, it's just a grocery store, right? Well, it actually turns out that there's something somewhat special about shopping there. I think one of the things that really appeals to consumers is the sense of discovery. So being able to find items at Trader Joe's that you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. They have created this whole elaborate cult of uniqueness, and so even if that product is sold somewhere else, it will look like it, and it won't feel like the same product to you. If suddenly it appeared less unique, or you started to associate the feeling of discovery with Tribe Hummus, Stonyfield Yogurt, or Naked Juice, it could hurt Trader Joe's business. But why would big brands ever agree to let their products bolster Trader Joe's image? Well, there's a few reasons. But one of the big ones is apparently that brand names are selling their products for less under that Trader Joe's label. In fact, Vince Dixon's Eater article found that, quote, the cost of the Trader Joe's products in our analysis were on average about 37% cheaper than the name brand versions. Suppliers don't want you to know that you can find their products in Trader Joe's because then they, of course, lose the money if you are the person who prefers to buy the brand. Essentially, big brands are expecting to break into a new market at Trader Joe's people who wouldn't normally buy the brand in a standard grocery store, but throw that same basic product under the Trader Joe's label into their cart because maybe Trader Joe's has a lower price or a healthier and funner vibe. Those suppliers probably don't want people already buying their products full price somewhere else to suddenly flood into Trader Joe's stores, or on the flip side, to lose that new market of Trader Joe's customers because they find out their new favorite thing is made by a name brand that they wouldn't normally consider buying. And even for smaller suppliers who don't have huge presences in other stores, agreeing to keep the relationship hush-hush in order to work with Trader Joe's can have major advantages. Suppliers do it because it's a really good business. They do tremendous volume with Trader Joe's. My reporting showed that they were a really good partner to work with. They paid on time. And I think that that's desirable for both small manufacturers who are trying to ramp up their volume, but also some of the big guys who want to just have more scale. Trader Joe's also tends to avoid grocery industry standard practices like nickel and diming suppliers with all sorts of extra fees. Retailers screw suppliers ruthlessly demanding, oh, there's a marketing fee that we're gonna associate with this. There's shelving fees if you don't wanna be on the lowest shelf. That stuff is brutal in the grocery industry. Suppliers hate that. Trader Joe's does not do that. Another reason for secrecy surrounding suppliers could be, as Mark Gardner explains, that the fun atmosphere, extroverted employees, and nods to healthier food create a sort of halo effect surrounding food quality. They play a pretty sophisticated game in terms of like a claim that you routinely see, well, everything in our store is all natural. Now, natural is a word that is basically a free-for-all from a food packaging, trademarking, labeling regulations perspective. People go into Trader Joe's thinking, 
oh, it's all natural. And then they kind of conflate like, well, isn't it all organic? Isn't it all really good for you? Bursting that bubble could be problematic and the company has a lot of success to protect. The company brings in an estimated $13 billion in revenue every year, and analysts say within their stores, they make anywhere between $1,500 to $2,000 per square foot, up to triple the amount a standard grocery store makes. Part of packing such value into each square foot is curating a small number of special goods under the Trader Joe's private label that shoppers will love. So a pretty ordinary supermarket could have 50,000 SKUs, stock keeping units. So two different sizes of Tide detergent would be two different SKUs, two different kinds of peanut butter, Skippy and Jif, those are two different SKUs. Trader Joe's, 4,000, sometimes even less depending on the season. That means the specific identity and combination of those SKUs is sort of like a trade secret for the company something they don't want their competitors to find out about and to be able to copy. It's no surprise then that Trader Joe's keeps their supplier's identity under wraps. But for all us Trader Joe's fans out there, it's still pretty fun to try to figure it out for ourselves. So next time you're in a Trader Joe's, keep a lookout for anything that looks suspiciously similar to something you may have seen before. And keep us posted on any good sightings in the comments. Other than that, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to help us out by liking and subscribing. And of course, if you want to stay up to date on Cheddar's latest, hit that bell next to the subscribe button too.